Hi guys, welcome to this bit of a different video today. So as you guessed by the thumbnail, I have been wanting to do digital art for some time now and I thought I would take you along with me as I learn. So my first painting is about to be shown and how I went about it and I'll try and talk through it as I go. So let's get started. I'm watching it back as I'm talking to you guys. So I haven't tried this before, so we'll see how it goes. Um, but yeah, so first of all, I just went ahead and um, set my canvas in Photoshop. I'm using Photoshop Creative Cloud. Um, now I'm familiar with that program anyway, because I have been doing graphic design for a long time, but I have honestly never really got into digital drawing before because one, I never had a tablet. Um, and two, I kind of always felt like it was gonna be this challenging thing to learn you know as an adult as a fully fledged adult that I didn't learn it young when I first started at university and things like that so I've just always put it off just terrible thing to do and terrible advice if you want to do something just get started you're never too old to start something I am a firm believer in that which is weird that it took me this long to start but anyway so um, so I'd never had any experience with it but I firstly just went ahead and watched a few videos online and I've always watched um, other YouTubers do digital art and I've always been very impressed and just wondered how yeah how much practice they must have to get things working and looking either realistic or really well you know formed in the animation style so yeah so I watched a lot of stuff and then I thought you know what the best way to learn is to just get cracking so I opened it up I started in Photoshop as I said and I found a brush that I felt mimicked if I was to just draw it by hand and just went with it. And so what I'm doing here is I've started with just some simple um, basic shapes and things I would draw to practice if I'm just warming up, you know, warming up the hand for doing some art. So I've just sort of tried to practice with a sphere and getting the shading a little bit accurate and really just trying to work out how this tablet feels and the pressure I need to apply and things like that. Um, and then I love drawing eyes, so I also started with an eye just to see if I could get any likeness to the subject. Um, and obviously as I'm looking at this, it's nothing fancy. It's just purely to just warm up that hand and see how it all works. I'm also practicing different brushes as well, which helps. And I know that here I started to get a little bit impatient and I just wanted to get started. I really am kind of like that. I'd rather just like attempt it and if it's a failure, it's a failure. But I'd rather just get something going rather than doing a lot of like warm ups and you know practice perfecting that sphere or perfecting an eye. I just I found this image online and I just thought that that would be ideal like I just wanted to draw that image so I'll put that up on screen now so you can see but it was just this um, picture of a girl all in black and white because I thought that maybe doing a monotone sort of image would be a lot easier to work with the shading. So that's how I've started. So what I'm doing here is an underpainting so this layer I'm gonna do in a blue and I'm literally just looking at my my picture on the left hand side and then I'm just trying to map out exactly where I think all the shapes would go um, looks very crude right now but but we get there and so I'm just using the eraser and trying to clean it up make all the proportions look correct now this is something that I would do differently if I was doing my traditional art because I am a fan of like a grid system I'll, and I'll sort of guesstimate a lot, but I've even just that process, that first step felt so different to me doing it on the screen, but it was so much fun. I can't even, I can't even believe how much fun I had doing this. It was just, it felt unnatural, but almost like very similar to traditional art. It was just a lot like less scary because any mark I make, if I wasn't happy, just control Z or you know, eraser. So yeah, and then once I had that base layer down, the underpainting, I went in with a line art layer. And I say line art like this because um, in the end, I don't think I end up using much of the line art layer. I've been watching a lot of like sort of animated portraits and things like that where they're quite cartoony, which I love that style, um, but it's never really been something that I've practiced with a lot. So in the end, I didn't have the plan of going in with like real realism, but in the end, I ended up kind of making this realistic. So this line art layer is sort of irrelevant. Okay, so once I had that line art layer, I remember thinking something's wrong. 
I was really struggling with the proportions here and I just remember thinking, oh, you know, how, how do people get that to work on digital painting? They seem to just sort of get it in there first time. But obviously I'm watching people who've been doing this for like a decade or two. So yeah, I was not so hard on myself and I just, um, just kept the raising and I felt like her jaw was way bigger than in the photo. So I kind of moved that in and adjusted some of the heights and stuff. And that seemed to make a difference, which was good. Um, and then I'm, then I was like, okay, let's just do another, another line art layer and see if I can get something a little bit more like crisp. Cause I was doing a lot of feathery lines that ended up just looking really messy. Um, so I went in with a second line art layer. <laughs> And I think this is where I started to get a little bit more comfortable with it. I started treating it as if it was one of my drawings that I'd be working on on a piece of paper. Um, I did get quite detailed and the, the brush I'm using is quite almost like a charcoal, a very thin charcoal. So it's a bit scratchy. Um, but yeah, I just, I, I will tell you right now, I'm enjoying this so much right now. Um, I've already done another painting since then because I enjoyed it so much. Like, yeah, really unexpected of how exciting it is to be creating like new art in a new form that I'd never tried before um, and really felt like I was never going to master it. Um, but now I've really got this desire to work more on it, to master it. Because it's going to be, it's just going to open up a lot of avenues for my career side of things. There's, um, you know, so much, so much, so many options for me as a graphic designer and then illustrator and artist as well, that it just opens a lot of doors that are currently a little bit tricky when it comes to traditional art, scanning it in to be a digital sort of means. Um, so now I was onto the skin layer and I had no idea what I was doing. I'll just tell you that. <laughs> um, so I grabbed what I thought was a, cause I kind of like the idea of having it to look a bit like a, um, like a drawing that I've done traditionally. So I kind of want that texture in it, like a bit of the texture of canvas or um, pencil sort of rough texture. Um, but then I started putting it down and it just looked odd. It looked really patchy and a bit gross. So I changed from that. I went for a big soft round brush, which give you more of an, like an airbrush effect. Um, and then that, that was hitting the spot for me. So I've kept with that and I'm just building up layers. So I started with that base sort of base tone across the skin. And then wherever I was seeing shadows on the, on the picture itself, I would try and place those in using that same brush and just adjusting the sizes of the brush as well. And then erasing where I needed to. And then it started to develop and already I was seeing that, oh, like this is fun i can i can achieve some sort of realism here which i really wasn't expecting to be able to create um especially on the first sort of attempt so i was really really excited about that yeah and then i'm just going through and adding the darkest shades and then just building and I, at this point i think i'd spent maybe maybe an hour i think maybe half an hour Actually, yeah, no, probably only half an hour at this point. Um, but in the end, I ended up spending a few hours on it purely because that's one thing I'm not sure about. Like, when do you finish a digital piece? Because you could, you could keep building and building, especially doing realism like this is attempting to be. Um, yeah, you could just keep going and really trying to perfect it. But what I did try and keep in mind is that um, most of the time digital art is viewed from a distance. So that's one thing that's gonna be a learning curve for me. It's to not really waste too much time on getting really close up and trying to perfect every little line and um, section because I don't think it matters in the end because most of the time you're gonna view it from a distance. If it's on a computer, you know, it's gonna be much smaller. Um, if you printed it in real life, then yes, maybe focus a little bit more on the detail. Um, but yeah, otherwise just have fun. And that's exactly what I was doing. <laughs> Um, and now for the hair, that was another challenge. I had no idea how to attempt it. So I ended up just grabbing um, a big soft brush to fill in the areas of the hair all in a darker shade. And then went in with this cool brush that I found that had like multiple feathers, like multiple strokes in it. And I just feathered it out. She's got this amazing curly hair anyway. So I felt like I had the luxury of working with curls, meaning they could be a little bit unkept and sort of, messy <laughs> because that's what it turned out to be like 
initially. I feel like I cleaned it up a little bit later, but to start with, it was just that idea of, you know, a big mound of beautiful curly hair. Now, one thing that I've learnt with hair since then, like I think what I'm going to do with this whole process is I might film every digital drawing that I do, if you guys like it and you wanna see more. I'm gonna film it for myself anyway to see improvements um, and personal growth. But if you guys wanna see more, I think I'll upload more to YouTube for this digital art side of things um, and just so show you my process because, and hopefully my progress because yeah, I just think it's really cool and it's such a new modern um, way of art and it's something that I hadn't really been able to have the chance to learn before. So yeah, if you're keen on that, let me know in the comments down below if you wanna see more like this and wanna follow my progress. And if you guys are doing the same and you're learning something, I would yeah love to share in that journey as well. So feel free to tag me in anything that you do or create. We'll learn together. <laughs> Um, yeah, and then the people that I'm looking at online as well, I'm just going to try and pick up tips where I can. At the moment, I'm not doing any courses. I might down the track, um, but like I said, this is the first one. Very green, but very keen, <laughs> very keen to learn. And so here I'm just realizing that I needed to add more, um, more mid-tones. I felt like it was getting a little bit flat. So I'm really trying to add more mid-tones and highlights and then the darker shades adding as much contrast as I can and just trying to perfect the little intricate details a little bit as well. And yeah, like right now there's, I can only see sort of half, half of the line art layer showing. So I end up basically deleting a lot of that. So that's something I'd like to figure out how to do more of in the future, like more of that cartoony style um, and you know, how to get that line art to be quite sharp and be the, be a clean crisp line for you to color within because that's yeah something that I haven't definitely haven't nabbed in this one I'm also learning the tools as well on the tablet that I have the tablet that I have is I'll get it here because it's right here it's the Wacom Intuoso there you go I was actually given that by one of my um, my daughter's school friends dads um, because he works in IT and he had one spare um, and yeah, uh, it has helped me so much. I've been using it for graphic design, but just for one or two jobs that I was working on where I had to recreate some murals, but um, you know, make them digital. So I had a little bit of practice on Illustrator using it, but never Photoshop. Um, but yeah, it's been so much fun and I love using it. So I can't wait to do some more. And now I'm getting to the finer details, adding some more depth in, in the hair and adjusting the, no the nose and trying to get that a little bit more realistic, adding shines in her lips. Um, yeah, and like I said, I'm just building it up and like just trying to get it to look as real as possible, um, even though that wasn't my intention to start with. <laughs> that's, what's, that's what's funny. There's definitely different ways you can use digital art and yeah, it's something I'd never sort of learnt at university because I sort of majored in painting and I've always drawn, just never had that opportunity and never really knew how many different ways you could do with digital art. So it's exciting, it's a brand new world opening up. <laughs> okay, and now I was pretty much happy with the girl herself, um, but I felt like with the way this photo was, um, I think she had a different earring on in the photo, but I wanted to do something colorful and bold on that exposed ear. I just think, um, just composition wise, I think it would look really nice. It's like your eye is drawn to her ear. So I had to make that look pretty special. So I found an earring that I was sort of, I sort of pictured a big flower or something very floral and feminine. Uh, but then I thought it would be nicer if it was an earring. So I chose these earrings that I found on Etsy, I think. I think I just searched clay flower earring because it's something that I'm wanting to buy at the moment. I'd love to get some, yeah, handmade sort of floral clay earrings. And I found these ones and I thought they were stunning. And the colors I thought would look nice with this black and white portrait. So I did that and tried to make them look, well, they're definitely not realistic, but just tried to make them look a little bit um, clay textured. So I used one of the canvas um, or the oil pastel sort of textured brushes. So that's what's given me that texture on there. And then adding some more little detail in the flowers. 
probably not needed, but that's what I do. And then it was time to create a background. Now I could have left it all white, but I felt like the contrast between her and the background was just too strong. So I wanted to put in a grayish sort of background, um, but then keep it inside a shape. I like to do that with drawing sometimes and I just felt like it would work really well with this. I like how the shirt becomes the background, like it's just a an idea that there's a t-shirt there or a shirt there, but it's actually not. It's the background, you know, flowing into her. So I really like that shape and I wanted to enhance that. So I created the circle that went around and then just neated, knit, tried to neaten up this line. This was a real pain. I think because I used like a hundred layers, I didn't know sort of where to, you know, I had to keep checking which layer I was erasing. So I think in future, I'm gonna try and label everything and maybe keep everything related to the skin on one layer and, you know, everything related to highlights, maybe on one layer. I'm still undecided of how I'm gonna sort of try to get better at these things because, but that was definitely a problem, just trying to find which layer I needed to erase from um, or hide things from, it was tricky. <laughs> So, but yeah, back to the background. So I put my background in, I chucked in a gradient um, from like a light gray to a dark gray. And then as just something a little bit extra just to finish it off, I wanted to tie in the colors on her earrings. So I just added a little rim of orange on one side and a little rim of red on the other. Um, and then the final piece was ready. And so I'll show you that piece now. even though I'm still making changes. <laughs> I wonder how many hours this was. This might have been an hour like four or something, five. Just touching up all the little bumps in the skin and the, the highlights that just felt off. And so then the piece was finished and I must say I am very proud of myself. I am so surprised that I was able to create this on my first turn, my first attempt. Um, I know I'll have a heap of growth to do and practice to do and progress to make, um, but I was really, really chuffed that I was able to achieve a fair amount of realism on this first go. Um, and hopefully I can take that realism, build on it, but then also pull back and be able to achieve some more like animated characters styles as well. So it'd be nice to be able to do both. Um, so yeah, wish me luck. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And just let me know if you want to see more of this in the comments below. And if you do want to see even more of my channel and my videos, um, feel free to check out my Patreon account where I will also do some more of this um, digital art down the track if everyone wants to, because it is a community that I've created for you guys. Um, and yeah, I really love doing it all. And I hope you guys like watching it. And that is all from me. Thank you. And I will see you next week. Bye.